Okay, we're within probably a 64th or less of the exact width of the template. So, I think we're good to go here. And uh, I want to be careful because these two boards here, they're the only ones I got exactly like this. I don't want to have to go to the lumber store and get another piece of plywood. So I want to make sure I get everything cut just right. Now as it happens here, I have a 30 degree precision angle. Okay, get it in between the teeth here. So it's flat against the blade. You know, I can't tell you how pleased I am with the precision of this particular saw. I have not tweaked the setting. This is the way it, it was from where I set it. It really is this accurate. Unreal. Double check. Measure twice, cut once. Well, my uh, tape here is kind of holding it out, so I'm going to allow for that. Okay. I think that's going to be perfect. Now, because I'm going to want to be having six exactly like this. I'm going to put a bit of a block here so that I don't need to do this template thing each time. Now before I go and cut a whole bunch of angles wrong, let's triple check here. See what we got here. Oh my. Unreal. It's dead on.
you are going to notice that I'm doing the plunge and pull thing here. Now I highly do not recommend this. This is uh, this can end up in a bit of a disaster. And when I go back downstairs, right now I'm upstairs at the computer editing out these scenes, but when I go back down I'm going to try and remember to talk about it a little bit here. It's got the same problem as a radial arm saw, which I think is a very dangerous saw if you use it the way it's designed. Anyway, Yeah, now if I can just do that with the other board here. Well, as you can see, I don't use this thing except for uh, making a catch-all out of it. Anyway, uh, yeah, the idea was with the saw, before I put a new tabletop on it and move the fence back, the fence was out here. And let's, let's pretend this is the fence where it was. That's pretty much where it was. And there was a slit in the fence, and you would drag the blade through the slit and cut whatever you happen to put right here. Now, you, you could do it that way, or you could do it the way, the way I'm doing it now, too. Anyway, the idea would, is that what could happen is the blade would start to catch, and it would start to grab and pull back on you. Now, because it can't go up because of the, the arm here, um, you know, things get out of hand really fast. Now, I never had it happen, maybe because I was aware of the fact that it could happen. Uh, but, uh, and the, I had one of these things as early as 1974. That was my first one. So, uh, I never had an accident with it, but I couldn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I could envision something really going bad really fast. So, uh, yeah. Now, let's, uh, well, what, what I do now is I put the work up against the fence and, and I shove the blade through the work, okay? Now, what can happen with that is if you're not holding it down tight, it can all of a sudden flip up and catch. Never had that happen either, maybe because I'm aware of the fact that it could happen. So a few minutes ago when I was trying to cut this plywood here, I know you couldn't see what I was doing because of the camera angle. However, this is basically what I try to do when I do the plunge and pull thing. I go down, get it in, and then I keep my arm stiff so that if it starts to grab and suddenly want to come, you know, I'm going to be sort of ready for it. That's the way I do it. There's still the chance that it could grab and kick a little bit, but at least with a radial, with, a, with this type of saw, unlike the radial arm saw, if it does grab, it will go up a little bit. Um, now this is just my opinion. Um, a lot of guys may differ and they might be just as right as me. So uh, yeah, that's my rant for today. 
Oh, don't get me going on hard hats. Talk about that sometime.